Welcome to Mindful Me. I'm your host, Dr. Marga Zaraga, family medicine physician and life coach practicing medical aesthetics and wellness based in Greater Boston in Wellesley and Needham. This health and wellness show was born out of the needs I saw as a medical doctor. People are curious and are even demanding information and options on how to get healthier, and more importantly, how do we improve our quality of life? And quality of life is simply, how do I feel good from moment to moment, minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day? It's my goal to highlight to you, our viewers at home, the knowledge and experience of various experts from both mainstream and complementary disciplines to inspire action in our communities in the areas of self-care and self-development, physically, mentally, and energetically. Today, we have Alicia St. Germain. She will be a passionate interior designer presenting to us today her vision for your home. Within these last eight years, she has been involved in intuitive home design, home renovation, and the implementation of organizational strategies. She holds a certification in color psychology with an emphasis in seasonal color personalities. She believes homes are sacred spaces that when designed with intention, have the ability to strengthen relationships, foster creativity, and inspiration for better versions of ourselves. Welcome, welcome, Alicia. Thank you so much, Dr. Marga. I really appreciate you having me here today. So the topic you set out today, I will t let you present to the audience. Sure. What is the topic? So today I'm gonna be talking about the truth about gray. So it's really important to me that I share with as many people as possible about how gray actually influences us. You know, most people know that it is a really trendy color. It's something that a lot of people rely on, but they don't really realize what it's actually doing to us. I love it. I, I want to tell you this. As I was sharing with you before the show, I have a very, I would say, novel uh, approach to uh, well-being. Mm -hmm. And one of these ways is called chromotherapy, mm -hmm. where we have lights behind uh, crystals um, that basically become part of the experience in, in my space. So it's very, I'm tickled by the idea yeah. that somebody in the design world is advocating what I'm advocating in the wellness world. So. I absolutely love that. It's, you know, the thing about color that I didn't realize is that it really does influence us. And the more I began to research its, its impact and influence on us, um, and the more I experienced it in my own life, I realized that we really truly are lacking in color in our interior spaces. Um, but so much of it stems from the fear that we're going to get it wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I come in. My whole goal is to be the conduit for my clients to show them that um, you can live in a colorful home and that it doesn't have to feel disjointed and it doesn't have to be drenched in color. It doesn't have to look like color is thrown up on the walls, right? But it can be completely aligned with their color preferences and we can eliminate gray from the equation. We no longer have to rely on it. Um, and so it's really powerful when I'm able to show my clients and other people, I also teach about color as well, when I'm able to show them the influence and the impact that color has on us. I mean, we were programmed to see color um, from the moment that we developed a third cone and we started to uh, we started to connect with color and feel its positive impact on us. And just over time, we've gotten away from it because it's felt confusing. I so appreciate that whole advocacy and the mindfulness approach of, like you said, intuitive design. Um, what got you to this journey? Yeah, so I'm actually not a trained interior designer. Um, I come by this as an artist, really, truly. I do think of spaces in terms of artistry. What are we creating? What does the client need? Um, and how can we bring their vision to life? Um, but I originally started by renovating a couple of homes. Um, and we, we bought a lar very large home that we just sort of like fell into the renovations of. And it was rather complicated, but I toiled over my design decisions and really relied heavily on Pinterest and on trends. And it wasn't until it was all said and done that I realized that it was lacking life. 
And, you know, I mean, what a first world problem to have to have this beautiful space that, you know, I had worked so hard for, but there was something that was missing and something snapped in me and I just realized it was color. And so I started to say yes to color. And as I did, my home truly came alive. And it was also this unfolding of myself as well, where I realized that the saying yes to myself was really powerful, right? As women were taught to sort of push down our needs and um, and really do, you know, what is what is required, what is expected of us. And so the saying yes to myself and tuning into myself and asking myself, what did I need? What did I envision in this space? And actually doing that and beginning that experimentation process um, showed me that I had a gift. My friends started coming into my home and saying, you need to be an interior designer. Yeah. Easy, right? <laughs> um, no, not easy at all. Um, so much more complicated than it seemed, but really, truly a passion of mine. And I'm so grateful that I found it. I just want to affirm you that one of the things I preach is that the internal work is 80% of the effort mm -hmm. and the 20% is like the strategy, the action points. Mm -hmm. So for you, I think it started with the internal work. Not I think, Absolutely. I'm sure. Absolutely, 100%. Right? Definitely. And so the, honestly, like as you know, real world, real world would dictate, uh, I'm not an interior designer, but in reality, that 80% you already achieved mm -hmm. of your goal when you found yourself through wow. your designs. That's yeah. so awesome. So go ahead, tell yeah. us more. Yeah, so, um, you know, so it was that the color, that color piece and sort of like the gaining inspiration from, I've lived all over the world. Um, and so the sort of bringing in that inspiration of my travels and things like that um, made me realize that our homes are meant to be alive and that really we're designing our homes for fear of or around what are the resale value might potentially be and then we're not able to actually truly live in and enjoy our homes because we're designing them for other people and so we just are committed to the fact that well maybe a well-designed home isn't for us or maybe I'm just not great with color or maybe color isn't for me or maybe I just need to have neutral plain walls or whatever it is mm -hmm. and then we are, we're lacking this whole piece of joy that we can actually feel and this engagement that we can experience with our interior spaces. And so, you know, I found that it was it became easier to tend to my home because I loved the way the space looked and made me feel. I, it became easier to have people over because I loved the way the space made me feel and I loved showing it off and I loved sharing it with other people and having it be that foundation for beautiful connection. And you know, what I didn't do is I didn't rely on gray. Okay, that's the secret to be revealed when we come back. Welcome to the Needham Channel, where you're a community-based television station that covers all things Needham. We cover sports games. Community events. Town politics and more. We also produce shows created by town citizens, so if you have any ideas for a show, we're here to help. We have a live news program every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. on all Needham Channel streams and on our Roku app. Also, be sure to check out Needham Local, our online news source where you can read up on all the latest happenings and headlines around Needham. Visit us at needhamlocal.org and sign up for our newsletter to never miss a breaking story. We're always looking for volunteers who want to learn more about anything television related or gain valuable experience working in a news media environment. To find out more about the Needham Channel, visit needhamchannel.org or email us at info at needhamchannel.org. Welcome back to Mindful Me with Dr. Marga. I am Dr. Marga and this is Alicia St. Germain and we are talking about the truth about gray. So now I, you have me at the edge of my seat. <laughs> so tell me, tell me, what do we need to know? So this is one of my actually favorite things to talk about because as most of us know, 
gray has really saturated the market. I mean, when it comes to selling a home, everything gets drenched in gray or, you know, agreeable gray or edge comb gray, whatever it is. And so homes end up being really boring or tailored to other people. And so I look at color from a perspective of grouping it. So in that way, I'm able to align, uh, I'm able to show others how to align themselves with their personal color preferences, which is really important because it's super empowering. Um, but from the gray standpoint, um, if we're looking at, say, a rainbow, right, of very vibrant colors, they haven't been defiled at all, they're crystal clear and beautiful, um, and we start to add in, in order to make those colors a lesser version of themselves, yes. we add either white or black or a combination of the two, which is gray. And so I like to refer to gray as being the ultimate desaturated color because it's actually the color that we use and add to other colors to strip them of their vibrance, right? And so this is the color that we primarily relied on. So think about um, in terms of, you know, living in Seattle, right, where it's very gray. We have gray days. Seasonal depression is very, very prevalent. Um, it really affects our mood. Think about how you feel when the sun comes out. Mm -hmm. Things change drastically for us, right? And so in that same way, we want to avoid gray because it's actually one of the only colors that negatively impacts us. Mm -hmm. It's the color is, that is literally devoid of life. Wow, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. My gosh. So tell me about moments that you wanna share in your success story. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I, I really never thought that I would be where I am today. Um, I'm very grateful for my journey. I'm in year four um, as an interior designer and absolutely mm -hmm. loving winning others over for color. Um, mm -hmm. When, you know, others don't think that, they're, that color is for them, showing them that there's a way to align them with their personal color preferences. And then the empowerment that they feel when they have a color palette, they can go shopping and they can choose items that are going to work or quote unquote flow in their space, right? Um, and it's really life changing for people. Also, I believe that, you know, color is one of the things that we can use in our homes, one of the easiest ways to infuse life uh, into our spaces, right? We don't have to go back to the drawing board and purchase everything brand new. We can absolutely uh, use color to change the way in our spaces how we feel. Um, and to influence connection and um, and I just I guess one of my most um, one of my biggest moments has been being able to design my space from scratch um, but using the principles that I've learned and that I teach right to actually start with that foundation of color and just layer in the color and create a space that my kitchen now I absolutely adore it. I live in a different home now and I just absolutely adore waking up every morning and going into my space and just, it feels so vibrant and full of life and it's the hub of the home and it will not go out of style unless I begin to evolve, my preferences begin to evolve because it is me. It's a reflection of who I am. I love it. Um, I think people can appreciate from this discussion that your home is actually a physical representation of your internal life. Yes, yes, it's so, so true. And that's why I think that organizational strategies are really important because we can leverage the power of our home to help support us in our daily endeavors, both inside and outside of our home. I mean, I always say, when's the last time you were able to find your keys, right? There are things that we just misplace, but there are ways that we can streamline our processes, our transitions and things like that as we're entering and exiting our home just by setting up the right system. I love that. So yeah, it ties into home organization and how I think a lot of people also need to see this, that starting with maybe a smaller area of your home mm -hmm. will make this less overwhelming. Any thoughts on this? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, that's so important. We tend to look at things in the big picture and get very overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And really, it's so important to just tune into ourselves and ask ourselves, what do I need? So looking at it from a place of function, right? How do I use this space? and um, what do I need to be the best version of myself in this space? And then what colors do I like? What do I love? I always say, 
Find one thing that you absolutely makes your heart sing. And then ask yourself, what does that tell me about my design style? What does it tell me about my preferences? And stop saying no to yourself. Start saying yes. And when you start saying yes to yourself, it becomes easier to say yes to yourself. You start to play with things and realize what feels good, what doesn't feel good. And then, you know, when we make mistakes, in, in interior design or what have you, it just is an indicator of what we need to change or tailor for the next time. So, you know, don't be afraid to make mistakes. I always say it's just paint, sure. Painting a space over again isn't the most fun thing that you could do, but there's, it's not, you haven't ever just ruined it, right? Unless you're taking a sledgehammer or something. But. Um, <laughs> But Even yeah, then, I right. feel like. <laughs> have faith in yourself. Have faith that you have what it takes inside, that you know what, it fe what, you know what feels good, and just start saying yes. So uh, I won't um, miss this opportunity to ask you, um, what was the pain point? Um, if you could get a little more, I would say, let us in deeper. What was the pain point like that kind of really pushed you? Because mm. you could have just continued. Sure. You mean, like you said, you had a beautiful home. Like it was by standard, a Pinterest win. Sure. Right? But what what really was the pain, like that nagging thing? Was it painful? Was it nagging? What was the thought? What was? I would say that it really had to do with the fact that I never fully felt settled in my space. I wasn't really the type of person that enjoyed being home. It felt very overwhelming to me. There you it go. felt like there were always things weighing on me. There was so much that needed to get done. I could never rest. I, I was I wore it like a badge of honor. I don't watch TV, right? I don't I don't I don't sit down basically, right? I'm just a goer. It's what I do. And now I actually love mm. being at home. In fact, I've designed my entire schedule around being able to be at home, work from home, and enjoy my space. Yeah. And that it, says so much. It's life changing. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to say that because I wanted a reflection point for mm. the audience where, like, what do they feel right now in their home that will invite the opportunity to experiment or uh, entertain the idea of transformation? And that's mm. what I am grateful for mm -hmm. that you shared with today that things don't have to be stagnant stability stability is appreciated but that should be balanced with change yes. and positive change when guided mm -hmm. would be like the most beautiful experience absolutely absolutely yeah we are very very lucky just to have a home in general and so you know i view it from a standpoint of we only get one life why not enjoy it i love that yeah. and with that thank you so much for having having all this time that you're giving us and our audience uh, to share your expertise. Um, this has been another episode of Mindful Me. Please find us on Facebook, on, also on YouTube, and you can enjoy more episodes online there. Thank you so much for all this time that you have shared with us. I hope you learned a thing or two. Join us for another episode.